Hello students! In our previous video, you have learned how to solve an exponential equation. Now, let's apply such skill in solving word problems. At the end of this video, you will be able to solve problems involving exponential function. Exponential functions play an important role in our lives. People use exponential functions to describe population growth. So if a certain quantity increases by a fixed percentage each year or any other time period, the amount of that quantity after t years can be modeled by the function y is equal to a times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power of t, where a is the initial amount and r is the percentage increase expressed as decimal. So in this case, the quantity 1 plus r is called the growth factor. Let's solve this first problem, which is an example of an exponential on population growth. So we have here a town has a population of 40,000 that is increasing at the rate of 5% each year. Let's find the population of the town after 10 years. So first, let's identify the given facts. So we have here A, which is our initial value or the population before uh, measuring the growth. So we have here 40,000. R here is the growth rate, most often represented as a percentage or expressed as a decimal. So for 5%, that is 0 0.05. For T, that is 10, which is the number of time intervals that have passed or that corresponds to years. Okay. So Next is we will use the appropriate function. So we will be using y is equal to a times the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power of t. So let's substitute the given to the identified function. So we have here y is equal to 40,000 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the power of 10. You simplify that one. And our final answer, we estimate it to the nearest 100 people, which is 65,156. So we can now formulate a conclusion that the population of the said town after 10 years is approximately 65,156. Moreover, Another application of exponential function is on compound interest modeled by the function A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N raised to the power of NT, where A is the compound amount or the ending amount, P is our principal amount or the beginning amount, R is the interest rate expressed as a percentage or a decimal, T here is the total number of years, so it should be expressed in years because interest rates are expressed that way. And N is the period per year. So this is not the total number of compoundings over the life of the investment, but this is the number of compoundings per year. Okay. So here's our guide for period per year. So if interest is compounded monthly, so N is equal to 12. If it is bi-monthly, N is equal to 6. If it is quarterly, that is N is equal to 4. If it is semi-annually, that is N is equal to 2. And if it is annually or yearly, that is equal to 1, regardless of the number of years involved. So let's try our second problem. Ramon won 35,000 pesos in a mathematics quiz B. He deposited it in the bank, which gave an annual interest of 0.6% compounded monthly. Assuming he did not deposit nor withdraw for a period of 10 years, how much will his money be by then? So let's identify the given facts. So we have here the principal amount or the beginning amount is 35,000 pesos. We also have here the interest rate, which is 0.6%, or it can be also expressed in decimal, which is 0 0.006. And for the total number of years, that is 10 years, N is equal to 12 since the interest is compounded monthly. Okay. So let's use the appropriate function. So since the problem involves compound interest, we can use the formula to solve the given problem. So we have A is equal to P 
times the quantity 1 plus r over n raised to the power of nt. So substitute the given to the identified function. So we have here a is equal to 35,000 times 1 plus 0 0.006 over 12 raised to the power of 12 times 10. So I'll simplify this one and it will give us an answer of 37,163.72 pesos. We can now formulate a conclusion that if Ramon did not deposit nor withdraw for a period of 10 years, he will have a total of 37,163 pesos and 72 centavos on his bank account. To do compound interest word problems, generally the only hard part is figuring out which values go where in the compound interest formula, diba? So, but once you have all the values plugged in properly, you can solve for whichever variable is left. So I hope you've learned something for today. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video. Bye!